Hello everyone out there in podcast land, this is your host, Severin Henderson, back again with another episode of Department 3C Presents a Podcast Connected to Fire. This week on the show, I had the distinct and great opportunity to speak with Mike Vitale of the Lincolnshire Village of Lincolnshire Fire Department. Um, we talked about on and off duty activities, um, how his he has a rescue dog and how that dog pretty much saved his life is how he likes to describe it. This is another one of those um, great episodes. I actually drove out to the village of Lincolnshire and sat down with him in his firehouse and got to talk with him. It was real cool. Um, just kind of a on scene episode. We kept trying to coordinate to get into the studio, but things just didn't shake out. So I said, Hey, you know, how about I come to you? He agreed with that. I went out there. We got some tones dropping in the background, which was pretty cool. Made it extra authentic to me because we were in a real firehouse, a nice firehouse, by the way. They had a lot of nice equipment. Um, and like I said, we talk about living, firefighting, living on and off duty activities. We talked about the dogs. We talked about his hobbies, what he likes to get into, all that other kind of fun stuff. And the way that we got together on the podcast, I, I put out a call to action on my Facebook page saying that, and I'll say it again, and I think I said it on another episode, but trying to wrangle podcast guests is like trying to wrangle stray cats. It's like you put out milk or food or anything. And it's like, here, kitty, kitty. And they come and then they hear a sound and they get frightened and they run away. Because I had uh, a bunch of people who were supposed to come on and then like at the last second, hey, sorry, I can't make it. Something came up. You know, life happens. Things happen. It's not a big deal. It's, it's all good. I'm just really happy to be able to put out content and be able to, you know, have a podcast to even talk about things. So, you know, with that being said, I would really appreciate if you send me any feedback that you have. Um, I have a couple of email addresses where you can reach me. My first email address is department3c at gmail.com. That's just a regular personal one. And I have info at department3c.com. Um, oh, I said, well, I'm sorry. Let me correct myself. I said department 3c at gmail so if i didn't say it I'm saying it again throwing it in there you you get what i'm trying to say <laughs> point is please reach out with feedback because that's what you know keeps the show better keeps the show fresh keeps the show going and i like i said i just really appreciate if you're listening the fact that you are listening so thanks a lot for that um, we have some other episodes coming up, and this is an intro just for that episode, but we have some more exciting, interesting people to come on the show. Um, thing about it is, like I said, it's a show connected to fire one way or another. I'm going to connect it to fire and first response, but that is what this whole thing, this whole show is about. Pretty much, it's the Sevy show with his guests, so... Thank you for listening. Thank you for checking me out. I really do appreciate it. So one more thing that I would like to say, I have a website that's getting redone coming out. So you're more than welcome to check that out, department3c.com. It's revamped, redone, reissued. It's beautiful. I just got to look to, had a chance to take a look at it today and it just blew my socks off. So I hope you like that. Um, another thing about this episode of the podcast, I talk about, like I said, on and off duty. And with that being said, we talk about business ventures where I talk about business ventures and things we're trying to do. One thing I want to promote is a crypto company I just started working with called Headway. Um, if you want some information about Headway and how you can earn some money with cryptocurrency and it's not a scam you know sometimes those people come and hit you with certain things and say hey give me this money hey not do this hey not jump through this hoop hey not jump through that hoop oh now you owe me five hundred dollars all that kind of, this is not that this is just a regular investment opportunity please 
like I said, if you are interested in that, hit me at one of those email addresses, either the department 3 c at gmail.com or info at department 3 c.com. And you can find um, that email on my website. Thank you so much for listening to me, and I hope you enjoy this episode. And please, feedback, feedback, feedback. Always need, love, and appreciate feedback. And don't forget to connect with me on different social media platforms at department3c.com. Or if you want to connect with me personally, I am Sevy on most social medias. After all that, let's get into the episode. Hello, everyone. This is Severin Henderson back again with another episode of Department 3C Presents, a podcast connected to fire. And today I'm getting the wonderful opportunity to hang out in Lincolnshire. Did I say it right? Yes, Lincolnshire. Okay. Lincolnshire. Um, we're at the main station and we're talking with Mike Vitale. Um, today we're going to talk about his journey, how he got to where he's at, how he got here. Such a nice firehouse and everything. It's talk not about bad. fire it's stuff. Not bad. And and of course we're going to talk about what he does in his time off. So without any further ado, Mike, how are you? Good man. Thanks for uh, coming in. No, thank you for having me. Um, I really appreciate you reaching out. I had put a Facebook post out there talking about trying to wrangle um, guests or like trying to wrangle stray cats and yeah yeah you're about the third or fourth person i got so i got to say that every time that i get somebody that responded to that, that yeah that i caught up with them well yeah i met you at uh at the studio yep it was right after you got burned yes yes so yes yes just, right after I, yep and they said we didn't think he was coming in i said yes i, I got work yeah. to do <laughs> yeah you, you got out of the hospital right to the yeah studio Shh, don't say that too loud because um, yeah i was still laid up but <laughs> <laughs> it was after hours so yeah, was a few days later right? yeah right, right, there right, we right. go yeah we fix it but yeah i um met you guys there um now you did y'all both have a dog, or it was just the one dog? Uh, Nick was there with his dog, Waffles. Okay. I was just there without. You, you was just there hanging out. Okay. Yeah. And Waffles, I just saw, because he took, I um just started teaching ropes, and I was just teaching a tech class. And yeah, the, the rope tech, tech yep. Yep, and he had Waffles Him and his dog, yeah. Every day. And, in fact, we even put the dog into a system. And yep, high lines and everything. Yep, yeah. so that was new for me. That was only my... That was only my first tech class, teaching. Yeah. And I haven't taken tech in about nine years. <laughs> so I had to brush up back yeah. on everything. I'm still I'm still learning myself. But, you know, they say when it comes to coaching and teaching, the two is better than a zero. So Right, right, right. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm teaching a rope tech tomorrow. So okay. I had to spend a little bit of time yesterday reviewing some of the specifics. But, you know. Going back over everything. Yeah. Cool. Making um, sure I everything. Now you teach. Um, you want to say the name for? Or? I work for uh, Elevated Safety. Okay, I didn't. I didn't know if you, we wanted to put it out there. Yeah, or not, but yeah, and you were teaching my other class that I just took the um, tower. The tower rescue. Yeah. Now yeah. and and I, I'm ta- I'm retaking Sprat, so okay, I'll yeah. be back out there. Yeah, I gotta I gotta take Sprat again. Well, I gotta level up. Level so up. Yeah. I'm up. I'm up for research. The end of September, so I have to. I'm going to level up, but I still need a little couple more hours, so I'm mm. like pushing it to the to the very end, right to the max. Yeah, yeah. so it's a lot of it's 500 hours on rope minimum. Oh, yeah, to to level up. Well, working with them helps out a lot. Yeah, I mean, you get to climb. You were climbing yeah. on the system that we had and tower and everything. Mm. You said you're teaching tech, so yeah, tech and tower, and we teach rope rope ops, and, uh, confined space ops and tech, mm-hmm. sprat tower. Um, a bunch of like confined space classes for public works and um, other private organizations, um, windmill uh, companies, all sorts of stuff. We're we're all over the place doing work, doing actual jobs, and then also doing uh, teaching. Yeah. So I was out in Philly on One Liberty doing the job out there. Okay. And you then, were you doing a tower or something else? No, we were doing. Uh, we were taking light covers off the side of one liberty in philadelphia oh i'm sorry you said one i thought my mistake okay cool yeah cool. yeah so we do all sorts of stuff but yeah t- teaching tech tomorrow so okay had to brush it up. seems like so much fun like that job just really oh, seems yeah. really and it's cool. a great it's a great group of guys that um the great group of guys that run it and great group of guys that teach and work so everybody has fun and it's you know it's a all you can ask for you get paid to do something fun and with a bunch of guys that are 
a good time. And you know, for myself, that's part of the reason I um, wanted to teach really bad is to keep my skills up and oh, yeah. to you know to know. Like I said, I didn't take that class, but a million years ago, and then say, hey, you got to redo everything. So I'll be I'll be dope in a in a minute. I'll be. Yeah, it's rope is one of those skills that if you don't use it, you for sure you definitely lose it. Yeah, yeah, because uh, it was like tie bowling. I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I tied that when I was 17, I, and that might yeah. have been the last time I tied a, a bowling for real. So cool. Um, now another thing that I like I said I talk about on my show is kind of what people do outside of work. I, of course, we can talk about fire stuff for forever, and you know, actually, before we get there, I do want to ask more about the station here and what it consists of and yeah. the um, city and everything. But another thing I talk about is off-duty activities, which you like to do. What? Because even though we're firefighters and that's what we do, I kind of promote the fact that that's not our only identity. I mean, oh, yeah. we have to be people outside that. Everybody I know that's in the fire service does something else outside of the fire service. Absolutely. So like, that's what i want to talk about later on but before we get there please tell us more about the wonderful is this a city a town a village oh uh, this is a village okay the, village i think yeah town village village of lincolnshire um we are a fire protection district so we cover like five or six different towns okay parts of different um different towns so we cover lincolnshire riverwoods vernon hills Prairie View, which is unincorporated Lake County, a bunch of other or unincorporated Lake County areas, unincorporated Cook County areas. Um, or else, Deer, uh, Riverwoods, a little bit of like Deerfield-ish, okay. Bannockburn. Um, but yeah, we're, it's like 15 or 16 square miles. Okay. Um, Lake Hook Road on the south, Route 60 on the north, and then I-94 on the east, and then it kind of goes in and out on the on the west side okay so three stations um this station that we're at has the squad the truck which we're getting rid of the truck mm -hmm. and just gonna run a squad mm -hmm. uh two ambulances and our battalion chief okay what about the other stations oh uh, the one station is just an engine house okay on the north mm -hmm. and then the south side station is an engine and ambulance okay how many um people on the department there oh well, we're short a few like everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the that's we, the service overall. Yeah, so we're short a bunch, but we have I believe f I think like 42 or 44 okay. right now. So that 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 reminds me of back home and I was saying um you know, well, for the listeners that know me, I'm originally from Cleveland and I worked for the city of East Cleveland. We had two stations with 53. Manning was supposed to be 53, but I don't think the whole entire time I was there was ever 53. So, yeah. like like I said, like the service overall, we kind of just run short and make do yeah. with what we have. Oh, yeah. So, our minimum is 10 a day. Okay. And we're trying to get to 15 guys per shift. Okay. So, yeah, ours used to be 12. And we had, at the time, two engines, a truck, and two ambos. But we called them squads back, back there. So... Um, yeah, a little different. Out yeah, there. a little, little different. Terminology is a little different everywhere you go. Right. That's um one of the. Yes, that's what I wanted to happen. That's yeah, an EMS call. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to. Uh, that's why I wanted to do it at the firehouse because that, like I was saying, that as that authenticity, you, that it gets to go off and yeah, get to yeah. Hear some and tones. we've been um, we like when I I've been here twelve years. Mm -hmm. I think I'm in my twelfth year. Um, when I started, it was like anywhere from five to seven runs a day. Mm -hmm. um, over the last three months, we were probably averaging twelve to fifteen a okay. day. Uh, my last, not yesterday, but my shift before that, I think we ran 21 or 22. Ooh, yeah, yeah. So it was a, it was a busy up. day. Yeah. Now, out here, what do you guys, are you guys do the colors or letters or we numbers? Do, uh, colors. So uh, I'm on gold shift. Today's black shift. Tomorrow's red shift. Now, please, if you know any history behind that, can you explain it to me? Not I necessarily have, the listeners, because... <laughs> I have no idea. I'm not sure, because... There's, you know, there's different shift 
setups where everywhere you go Mm -hmm. it seems like a lot of the like the city anything close to the city goes by numbers Mm -hmm. for their shifts for their platoons or whatever you know some call them platoons some call them shifts yeah um out here is all colors for whatever reason and then you know you go elsewhere then they work like 24 24 24 24 all 48 all 48 yeah yeah it's it's, i love it that's I, i just like you know going to different places and talking to different people seeing how they're how their setups are a little different. Some yeah. guys, some guys like their shifts or their schedule. Some guys, even though they getting a check, they hate it. <laughs> <laughs> right. It just depends on the individual. Right. I I'm uh, hopefully at our next union meeting. I'm gonna not. I'm not gonna push for it, but I want to bring in the talk of 4896s. So Ooh. two days on, four days off. Will that be like optional or how? How that would, you guys work well, that? Well, we would have to obviously go to it fully but so everybody yeah okay. our, our department but it's there's a lot of benefits as far as sleep mm-hmm. and your recovery mm-hmm. outside of the firehouse um like wellness at home there's a lot of they've done a lot of studies that you're happier you have a better relationship with your significant others or your kids you're around for more more things mm-hmm. for your kids um like just for example with obviously the fire service and the high divorce rate you take you take a guy who's got you know, half, you know, splits time with his, with his ex and their kids, as opposed to just having his kid 36 hours, Mm -hmm. he's going to have him three days, Yeah, you know, on his four days off. So, I mean, I don't have kids, but I could see that as a, as a benefit. Um, well, you got a fur kid. I do. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to, we're going to, we're going to get into that too. She's she's enough of, yeah, she's (laughs) she's a lot more work than I I think. Than a regular kid. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe not. I don't know. Not like. Haven't, haven't experienced that yet. Hopefully soon. I've um I have kids, but I've never had a um dog of my own. I've always helped other people take care of their pups. So that's, it's, that's like the thing with kids. It's like either um you like them or you like other people's kids. And I'm, <laughs> I'm like I like dogs, but I like other people's dogs. So yeah. other people's dogs are cool. I don't I don't know if I would ever get my own. It it would have to be something like your situation for it to be. It would have to be like a rescue dog or yeah, something. Yeah, working, working dog, yeah. But before we get to the dog, um, just a couple. How are you, sir? Um, before we get to. That's my fire chief. Okay. Oh, the whole department? Yeah, he's a big boss. Okay, cool, cool. Um, department? No, it just happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have chiefs and they just are chiefs of a division. So right, that's, right. Why, <laughs> that's why I was asking. He is five feathers. Okay, there yeah. we go. Um. Where was I at? Talking about before we got to the dog. Oh, we were still talking about Lincolnshire. So, um, yeah, that's that's a decent number. And the hours. I never heard that, but I am a fan of homework. So now you just gave me some homework to do. I haven't I haven't heard that. I haven't even looked into that. But I know for us in the city, I'm one time, and. Um, Rest his man's soul. He passed away. But a medic I was riding with, he was from Cleveland as well, too, and he was he was an older gentleman. And um, I said, I don't think he ain't messed at work 24s and um, the three days off. He was like, uh-uh, I want my three days off. Yeah. I'm like, I, I said, after a certain time, the care kind of goes down. I mean, as <laughs> nice as you try and be, as nice as you try and be, it's just when something come in at 2 in the morning and you, like, have their – it's not necessarily what's up all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, I mean, getting woken up in the middle of the night at anywhere you're at is not fun. No, it's, it's right. That's yeah. So that would be my thought. But if you're not running a ton of calls and the work is split very equitably, I can see how that would work depending on the department. I know that wouldn't work for us, 48. But like I said, for yeah. them, I just thought they should do 12 and 12. Yeah. Like, yeah. And like two or three days yeah but everybody everybody i've talked to um and everybody that i've talked to that have went from 2448s to 4896s Mm -hmm. have they're like they would never go back yeah i i can believe that yeah Yeah. they love it and um just recently i was um i was actually applying out west to colorado Mm -hmm. and i got a job offer but i turned it down those too many I had too many think too many good things happening here. Yeah, so yeah, I can feel that. It didn't it didn't make sense. Mm-hmm. But their schedule and again everybody I talked to was like that you know, some uh a guy, a friend's dad 
who worked in Niles. Mm -hmm. He left at like 10 or 11 years and got hired in uh, Breckenridge. Red, okay. I think it's called the Red, White, and Blue. Mm -hmm. And he went to the 4896, and he's like, this is the best schedule of all time coming from, you know, come working in Niles. 2448 to, to, to 4896. 4896. I can see that. I'm, I'm, I'm always a fan of um, More times waking up in your bed, in your own bed. <laughs> hey, that's, yeah. the firehouse bed is like my, <laughs> my own bed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we got a sign was at this point, so, you know, it, it is what it is. But I can, like I said, I'm a fan of change. A lot of firemen, they are very... Set in their ways. opposed to any type of change like you change something it's like you didn't came and stole a firstborn yeah so no yeah. I, I would i would explore it and yeah. i don't mind when i work 48s it depends on where i'm at now sometimes you work with 48s you want to go jump off one of the high rises in the city <laughs> yeah but other times um it's not the worst thing in the world so i can i can definitely understand that um well, that's that's enough for Lincolnshire. Um, yeah, it's all right. You know, it's a good job. It's, it's good, a great job. Good people. Good uh, good place. There's a lot of you know good things happening here, and we uh, a real young department, so there's a lot of good changes and mm -hmm. um, progressive. Progressive, yeah, yeah. Because younger guys like to change and do stuff. You know, like to keep up with newer. Yeah. Tactics so there's yeah there's a lot of. Um, you know, like guys like myself and my Lieutenant Craig that you met downstairs, mm -hmm. we're always training, always doing stuff down on the truck floor. We're going to a, we have a training center down mm -hmm. the street that is shared between five departments. So we're always going out and training and finding better ways to do stuff and bringing it back to the department and just, you know, putting on trainings for, for the department, going over equipment and just staying involved and invested. Because yeah. I think if you work at a place like this and, you know, you run maybe, you know, five, ten fires a year at the most and a couple rack, couple good racks are, you know, mostly medical. Mm -hmm. If you don't have fun when you're at the firehouse and you don't go out and play fireman every day, yeah. you know, while you're on shift, it's yeah. going to be a long 20, 30 years. You know? Well, not even that for me. Um, a lot of times when people, like, on purpose go to places now not for medical reasons or anything else but like just because they're lazy and <laughs> like i'm gonna go somewhere where i don't do nothing i get the same check I, I yeah no and when something does happen they burn the whole block down <laughs> because they weren't even training while they were bragging about not doing nothing i yeah. that just doesn't sit well with me because no you don't you don't serve well, first of all, you don't serve yourself. Second of all, you don't serve the citizens. You just kind of yeah. So we're here to we took an oath to protect lives of property and also the guys we work with. You know, so yeah. If you're not invested in it and you're not staying up on the new technology or the new, you know, like when the like limited um, ventilation fires and mm -hmm. all the different UL studies. If you don't stay up on that, you just you get lost and you know you make poor tactical decisions or you show up on something and you're overwhelmed. So if, you know, you train every month for one call in 20 years, mm -hmm. it's worth it. It's worth, you know, I have a buddy and maybe he'll listen. He, he will hear this, but he's back home in the Cleveland area and he works for one of the suburbs. They have the nicest equipment you ever see. The nicest firehouse you'll ever see. It's like, not the white house was something really nice. The Taj Mahal is okay. beautiful. Point is, Anytime they get a fire, like the whole everything is just gone. <laughs> they but, burn it down. Yeah, no names, please. They they they, <laughs> make, they turn every every apartment complex into a Olympic sized swimming pool. So, so <laughs> we we keep that. Like I said, no names, please. Keep that inside. Well, outside for the listeners, but you know, y'all will figure it out. Yeah. Um. So anyway, we were talking about kids and being off and your fur pup. So one of the, like I said, one of the reasons that I wanted you on and you said, you said saving or dogs saved my life. Can you explain oh, yeah. that? To, yeah. To so me? I got the dog in two, th I, her name's Irie. Mm -hmm. she, uh, got her in 2017. Yeah. 2017. Mm -hmm. And she, I got her, she was a handful she was crazy and <laughs> so i was doing like all sorts of training or starting to do all sorts of training with her and then 
got into the search and rescue stuff with the Illinois Task Force One. Mm-hmm. Um, got involved in, with that, and then got um, just you know it's like this is cool. I'm into this training dogs is cool. Mm-hmm. The whole thing is you know it's it's something new again. Mm-hmm. Like we were just talking about you know staying up and trying you know bringing new things to the fire firehouse and the fire department and fire service in general is you know it's always good Mm -hmm. uh so it was something new for me outside of being a paramedic outside of being a fireman outside of being you know a technical rescue guy Mm -hmm. another thing to you know add some you know add a little more to this job and a little more excitement so i got involved involved with that and just right before i think it was I gotta figure out my dates. I think it was no, it was right after. It was right after that, because um, I got her in March, and then December of seventeen, my uh, my lieutenant Jim Carney, mm-hmm. he was a lieutenant here, mm-hmm. started here with him. And a little backstory, just to jump back real quick. Go ahead. I started here as an explorer. Okay. So I went to uh, high school right down the street, mm-hmm. and they had an explorer post. So I was on that, mm-hmm. and he was. Um, he was uh, very involved with like, with teaching and instructing and like you know doing stuff with us. Mm-hmm. And then we had a uh, paid on call program that that kind of evolved from the Explorer Post to send guys to the fire academy and to get them experience and all that. And he was again very involved and very, um, you know, he's he was the guy that would be out on the truck floor at ten o'clock showing you something because mm-hmm. that's just who he was. Going over, yeah, yeah. 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 So in two thousand seventeen, he uh, passed away. His picture is right there. Yep, I see yeah. you got the. I, I saw the name. Yeah. Because at first when I saw it, I thought it said Carrie, and I'm like, is they are they you know trying to? But then I saw I reread it and I yeah. see. So yeah. Yeah. So Jimmy Carney. So he passed away from duty related cancer in December of 17, and he was like me and a bunch of guys here, our mentors, mm-hmm. like coming up through the fire service. He was always again always hands on, always training, always reading. Um, the latest on, uh, you know, fire behavior and fire attack and tactics. And funny story about that, we had a basement fire, and it was, like, right when all the UL stuff was, was it wasn't coming out, or it was just starting to come out, mm-hmm. and you know, about ventilation limited and, like, you know, closing the doors and all that yeah. stuff. So they got this basement fire, and they took out the, all the window wells, and then they went through the front door into the, into his huge house, went through the front door into the foyer and then into the basement. And they were making a push down the stairs of the basement. Mm-hmm. And when myself and another company got there, we went in the front door behind to search. Mm-hmm. Another EMS call. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. I love it. Keep going. Yeah. Yeah. We need all that sound. <laughs> yeah. So he, so as our second and third Duke companies got there. Cause he was uh, he was the first uh, first Duke engine there. Um, he was at the top of the stairs. His two guys were making the push down in the basement. He felt us walking in, and he felt how spongy the floor was. Mm-hmm. And he he pulled his guys back up from the stairwell because they had just made the I think they made the first landing or the down in the basement. Mm-hmm. But he pulled them back out told us to bail out because the floor was going to give and i went out the front door one of the one of the guys i think two of the guys that were on the truck bailed out a window in another room Mm -hmm. and him and uh craig and i think dave they hightailed it back to the front front door and and literally right after that the whole the whole first floor fell into the basement yep and i don't know if it was a couple months later when all that came out Mm -hmm. he was like he, he's from Wadsworth, so he had a kind of a funny accent, he was <laughs> okay. a little, kind of a little hillbilly. So he said to us one day, or he's like, you know, man, I could have killed us all <laughs> by hitting, taking out those windows. I did it completely wrong. <laughs> so he, it was just, you know, he was invested and he learned his, you know, that was not what we're supposed to do, but that's what we did for, for so many years. Right, right, right. So anyways, uh, lost him in 2017. That was a huge hit for us in our mm-hmm. organization mm-hmm. and, you know, a bunch of us that were real close to him. Um, so that was uh, the first of several very tragic life life experiences in, like, 
the years after this. So 17, uh, my lieutenant passed away from cancer. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, two years, almost two years, two years later, maybe a little less, April of 19, my best friend, uh, Paul Miller, died in a motorcycle accident. Mm. Somebody pulled out, an old guy pulled out in front of him, mm-hmm. and he passed away. Um, so, and me and him did, I mean, we were inseparable. We did motorcycle trips. Like, we rode across the country from San Diego to Jacksonville up to D.C. from Memorial Day, and then back home, like, two and a half weeks, mm-hmm. 5,000 miles. Mm-hmm. Um, we went up to Canada on a motorcycle, Sturgis a bunch of times, um, dragged boats all over the place to mm-hmm. go to go boating so lost my best friend in 18 yeah 18 or 19 sorry april of 19 Mm -hmm. and then april of 2020 yeah because it was last year april 2020 another guy here mark amor uh had an accident on his uh at a side job Mm -hmm. he was grading a um a not a it's like a driveway or i guess it was driveway but it's on the chain of lakes, right in Fox Lake. Mm-hmm. And he got some news from his dad that his uncle had passed away, and his un- him and his uncle were real, real close. Mm-hmm. And he misjudged the distance um, from where how close he was to the edge of the water, and the skid steer went in the water, and then he drowned. Oh, I'm yeah. Sorry to hear that. Yes. So that was so that was three you know, four, about four and a half years, four years apart or so, mm-hmm. um, losing my mentor in the fire service, um, my best friend, mm-hmm. and then another uh, mentor and friend mm-hmm. um, who actually, me, another story, me and Polly were on a snowmobile trip with uh, Mark, mm-hmm. and he hit a fence post mm-hmm. and blew out his tib fib, open fracture, Ooh. and this was in the, this was like two in the morning, mm-hmm. we were heading back to the, to our um hotel not hotel like our airbnb or rental whatever and he blew out his leg and he stood up and he's you know he's like oh i'm I'm fine i'm fine and we me and polly looked down and like dude you are not (laughs) you are not fine yeah so we polly ripped off his shirt uh we patted his wound we put a tourniquet on his leg and then i drove him to the firehouse which is like half hour away oh and then i called uh called 911 and then they you know, all the volunteers came in mm-hmm. to transport him like another hour or so. Because we were up in the Northwoods. So another hour or so to a hospital. And he was, when he was on the back of the sled with me, he was like in and out of consciousness. Because he had, you know, he lost, yeah, the, lost a lot of blood. Lost I a lot of blood. That. Yeah. So we, we saved his life, me and Polly. Yeah. And then I lost both of them within almost a year to the day. Yeah. In 2019, 2020. Oh, man. That's... So it's been a, and then. Even before that, a couple of years before Jimmy passed away, I lost my dad. Mm-hmm. So it's been a lot of loss and a lot of uh, grieving and a lot of you know processing like why all this why why this all happens. Mm-hmm. Um, and then going back to the dog. So she pretty much from from when Polly passed away, she wasn't allowed upstairs, mm-hmm. and like in the house she was only downstairs and you know very like we were very strict on where she can go but the first day we got or the first night after spending the night in the icu i came home to sleep a couple hours Mm -hmm. and she just walked right upstairs (laughs) didn't even care that's it didn't even care she knew so kind of how i've dealt with all this loss at least i feel like how i've dealt with all this loss is through her and through all the training because we train we train every week, every Wednesday for six hours, and then we do two additional eight-hour trainings a month. Okay. So that's, you know, 24 to 36 hours of training every month. And then all the stuff at home that we do. Um, so I pretty much dove, like, headfirst into dog training in the dog world. Mm-hmm. And that was my way of kind of investing myself in something else besides sitting at home and crushing beers. Yep. Because that's what the whole... Probably, uh, Polly's accident was in April. Probably from April through the summer was like just drinking. Yeah. And yeah. trying to shut out, you know, emotions and all that. And all too often, that's how we 
deal with stuff is is gas a lot of time and then as firefighters you got to be tough all the time right and it was great that you didn't fall into that right trap completely right so i was definitely i mean there was definitely times where i'm like i need to tune it back a little bit and mm-hmm. and and that's where the like i said the dog training came in i just fully like head first dove into it not just like the search and rescue stuff but got into like tracking and trailing started going to dog training seminars like fully invested in it just mm-hmm. to keep my mind learning something new you know sh- obviously it's a lot different learning something new and then utilizing it with an animal that has you know that gives you back you know gives you back something mm-hmm. uh, some feedback uh so just full on into the dog world and training her and it it just was a, a clutch or a crutch um and to to try to you know steer me in a better direction than the one i was that i knew i was going down okay. and so it was uh yeah it's it's been an in- interesting four and a half years it's it's been a lot of fun but it's been like like i told you she for sure saved i mean i don't know how bad i would have got Mm-hmm. maybe it would have got worse maybe it wouldn't have maybe i would have you know realized that i need to you know focus on something else but so she that first year was like absolutely what kept me you know kept me going because i had to prep her for for tests and get her to a certain level for certification and all that stuff so it was just constant training and then um when mark passed away i me and my buddy built this screen and porch so <laughs> I I took the grief and the, and the grieving from that loss, and I built a really nice, fancy screened porch attached to my house. Okay, well, that's <laughs> so, nothing wrong with that. I'm yeah. I'm really happy that you found a positive outlet for what was going on in your life, and I would just encourage any body any listener to try and find something positive of course you're gonna have that little bit of downtime where it's like yeah drink 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 i mean and i mean you go out with the guys and yep it's you know group therapy group right group (laughs) therapy but for some guys it it gets too much obviously and dealing with home life and dealing with firehouse life and there's a lot of stresses in our job you know not actual calls but just there's a lot of stresses just waking up in the middle of the night Added, you add stress, yeah. getting weird sleep, going home yep. with not sleeping, dealing with you know having to homeschool kids, especially with COVID, COVID and all this came, stuff. Yeah. So there's a there's a lot of you know there's a lot of substance abuse and stuff in our jobs and and I found a way to get around you know just abusing. Put something you you found something else. You you know I think. I talk so much between this podcast <laughs> and talking to people and having conversations and everything. But I was talking to a friend. The reason I say that, I can't remember if I was talking about this on the podcast or was I just talking about <laughs> just this. Just hanging out, right? Yeah. But I was saying how most of my friends and a lot of my, my whole family are firefighters. And we, like, really have that type A, go hard or go home, yeah. all in personality. Oh, yeah. And we can either go all in negatively. Yes. With boozing and drugging and, and horn being if a, possible. Being a bum and yep. just and not showing up ready to work. Yep. And we can either go in all in like that or go all in like you did. And yeah. And you just went, I'm, I'm really happy that you found something positive. Yeah, it was it was a real shitty three years, three or four years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a lot of, a lot of tough times for sure. Um, and and also like like the ele- teaching for elevated safety mm-hmm. that was another outlet for me mm-hmm. to invest in. You know, keep my mind busy, keep myself busy, and you know, I'm I'm the, again the type A personality. Yo, I always got to be doing something. There's mm-hmm. always I always have something to do. Mm-hmm. Um, That's what I say. I'm never bored. Yeah, yeah. There's always. I, I don't. I don't even know what that feeling is. I've. I, uh, I'm never bored. Yeah. So there's always. There's always something. I like for me, my schedule is just always jam packed. There's mm-hmm. always training to go to, or I'm teaching, or, um, you know, taking a class, or I'm doing dog stuff, or, you know. So, I, f- for me, I think that's how I've I've dealt with all the loss and all the grief and grieving and all the pain is just. And my outlet is 
keeping myself busy. Yeah. And th- the dog was for sure, that was absolute 100% saved me from possibly worse. Okay. Now, let me ask you this. With that being said, and like I said, go hard or go home, where do you find or do you build in time for yourself like to just chill out? Huh. You know, What's that like? <laughs> okay. So, let me but you, so I'm, yeah, not, I mean, I'm not going to preach to you, but that's something that you yeah, absolutely I, need to do. Oh, for sure. So I leave Thursday going up to Torch Lake oh, in Michigan, dragging the, so I got a boat, got yeah. a motorcycle, just sold my Jeep. Um, so there's other, you know, there's, there there's, you go. Okay. Was, you yeah. made it seem like you was just, no, 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 no. there's always, well, I'm just, I'm always doing something. There's okay. always something to be, you know, long as you're doing something for yeah. you. Cause that's, that's, that's what I'm getting at. I want yeah. you to do, do stuff for yourself. Oh yeah. Going, dragging the boat up to Torch Lake on Thursday for a few days. A lot of friends are meeting us up there, coming up with us mm-hmm. and then, um, home back home Tuesday. And then we go to Idaho for a week. We, okay. Wednesday to Wednesday? Well, yeah, I think Wednesday to Wednesday. You know we in the, the Sunday of summer. You know what the Sunday of summer is? No. August. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah the Sunday of summer, yeah. August Don't, is the Sunday of summer. Like. Well, I think September is still part of summer to me. Okay, I'm with it's it. It's still warm. I like that first part. Yeah, yeah you can still, still get stuff done. I'm, yeah. I'm with it. What's that? Um, Labor Day, and then after yeah, so, everything shuts down. So. Yeah, so we're going to Idaho for uh, for Labor Day. And we have some friends that just moved out there a couple months ago. So we're going to spend Labor Day out there. And then I'm off pretty much the whole month of September. Okay. And then once you come back and you whip these dudes into shape and get them on some 4896s, you going to be off even more. <laughs> yeah, I got to do that. I got to bring that up, uh, I think, in our September union meeting. Now, how many, does that translate to about the same Approximately the same amount of days we already yes, worked now. Same days. Okay. You, work, you work less weekends. Um, there's a. I'll send you. I'll send you my whole sheet. Yeah, there's, I'm. I'm. I'm in. Not that I'll ever get there's there. There's a lot of pros, but because I mean they had the opportunity to work um, one on three off, and they were like, nah, because two reasons: because we don't like change, and because we won't get to see every shift. So. <laughs> Cause you know you got the three shift rotation, yep. so that was that was two of the reasons they said they didn't want to go to that. Yeah, um, that was before my time. So those are just the stories that I hear. Right, right, right. Yeah, changing the fire service is never good. Yeah. But we, I mean, going back to what I was talking about, um, you know, being progressive and doing, you know, taking a hold of new things, new technologies and stuff in the fire service. We've, um, with again me investing my time into positive things and not, you know, Mm -hmm. going out and just partying all the time or being a bum. Um, We took our dog team and we put it together with drones and our drone team. So we have, we have a dog and drone team, which is called the SRST search and rescue strike team. Ooh, you into the drones too? I don't fly the drones, but we have, Currently, we have two pilots here. I guess the other called pilots. Yeah. yeah. So we got two guys that fly drones. Because you got to get a real yeah, FAA, FAA, FAA. Uh, license to fly the drone. So we have, so um, we, again, investing in, you know, my time into positive things. Mm-hmm. Uh, myself and uh, Todd Basagio from West Chicago. Mm-hmm. He's also on the. Um, TRT. He's also on the task force as a dog handler. So. Okay. We we saw a need, and specifically after um, one of our other guys, John Johnny Valentine from Waukegan, mm-hmm. they had that building explosion. Mm-hmm. He's also on the task force, but he ran his dog mm-hmm. on the building collapse, but the task force never went to this building that exploded. Mm-hmm. So we're like, we need to have these dogs available to be utilized for local incidents. But what they... Right, what well, we train them, what well, we yeah. train them for. So we developed this team, and hopefully, at some point, it'll become another Mavis, um, you know, technical team. Not that you you guys in Chicago know much about Mavis, but they don't. <laughs> I, I tried out for them. Maybe they t- they told me wait a little while longer. So yeah, I, I said no problem. Well, yeah. So like out here, we we rely a lot on mutual aid. You guys just have the city just more people just you just, <laughs> just throw you them just at it throw more people at it well yeah. we you know 
if we get a fire, if we get some sort of incident, we need to rely on our neighbors yes. to provide assistance yes. to, um, you know, facilitate whatever the, whatever the job is. So we're hoping that this team becomes, because we have, you know, dive team, hazardous materials team, um, the TRT, technical rescue team, mm -hmm. the swift water team. So we're hoping that this gets at some point uh, sucked up into Mavis mm -hmm. and then it becomes another um, avenue and option for people to uh, pursue in in their careers in the fire service. So so we got dogs and we got drones and we respond to, again, any like building collapses or building explosions and then also missing people. So if somebody walk, you know, a kid walks away from home or an autistic kid wa wanders off or um, Alzheimer's patient, dementia patient leaves a memory care facility, mm -hmm. our dogs are also trained in tracking and trailing. Oh, that's so sweet. That's so they, nice. we can show up and we can, you know, get an article of clothing or a pillowcase or something, and then we will hopefully track them down. But the biggest issue that we, like anything new, is getting the name out there, getting it having people know about it and well that's what that's what this is for so we're going to <laughs> we're going to talk about it yeah that's um you know having it, it's it's the gift and the curse because i've been on a department where we scraping by with nothing and now i'm on a department where any problem we just throw more people at it and mm -hmm. i can't say one way is better than another i mean it I guess I have to split it to maybe 60, 40, because it is great having a ton of people to just say, here, take this. <laughs> but sometimes it's, it's great to have a few people that are like really superiorly trained, like really know what they're doing and yeah. what they know what's up. And that's kind of the company I'm on now, but it's it's just a little different. Yeah. And that's what, that's what we do out here is, you know, you, everybody's firefighter, paramedic, and then people, you know, like like you you kind of specialize in yeah, other stuff extra stuff yeah. but we have to you know we can't just throw six guys in the squad company at something we have to there's only two of us on my shift that mm -hmm. do trt we have one diver and one hazmat guy mm -hmm. so if we have an incident we need to rely on other people to mm -hmm. help us out from other towns around us and you know what else that does well for us it um we we all know each other and that's pretty much it and i got to meet you through classes and like you said in the studio but with other departments it gives you the opportunity to meet other people um you kind of pick other people's brains because yep. even if you are training together you might learn something just a touch bit different from another department whereas we just all kind of do it the same way all the time and until you guys come to our classes and then we teach you like, the right. holy <laughs> right exactly <laughs> we teach how it should be done yeah but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna disagree with that so yeah yeah we, it's, it's really cool what um the city's doing with you guys is sending them sending you to all these extra classes, classes yeah. and that's good because it keeps you guys up on what's the what the newest technology is what the newest techniques are and it's good. It's cool. It's cool to see all the, like the bigger cities, you know, conf not conforming, but actually making change in their organization. I wish it was more, but <laughs> hey, baby we steps. take we, baby steps. I'm baby about to say steps. we take what we can get. You guys got Harkin winches. You guys yep. got all the fancy, yep. all the fancy equipment now. Now, yes, we do. Yeah. Um, and they were they they was told me who was responsible for it, but I don't. I just know we got it, and I know how to use it to get us out of a jam and like just yesterday we were talking about yeah if we get a window washer you going over i'm like oh i just had to not look down <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just just because we um we we go out and train a lot on the company i'm on now not that we didn't on my other company but we were like super busy we were we, we were so busy we didn't get a chance to do as much so it was real life stuff there yeah. but now we 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 saw some window washers. We went up, talked to them, asked them, you know, who they gonna call, what they gonna do. None of them spoke English, so we yeah. figured that out. It was, it was pretty pretty cool on the spot training. So yeah, we had uh, that the last window washer that you guys had. Mm -hmm. He came through Sprat with us. Yep. And whoever was on your company came um, came through Sprat as well. Yep. And he he's the one that saved saved the guy. Was it Justin? Um no, um Felix. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So yeah, it was. It, and he was just a tower with me too. So, yeah. Yep. He, 
That's he is he's a smart guy. It's he, good. Yeah. So I mean, being you know progressive and everything, it's that's again that's what kept me here. Mm-hmm. Versus you know because I got a job offer out west and that's what I've wanted for so long. But mm-hmm. all the stuff that I've worked on here and that um, you know like my company, the guys I work with are second to none. You I mean, look kind of west coastish. Yeah, <laughs> I, well, um, that's a that's the plan is to get out west yeah. as soon as as soon as I can. But there's there's a lot of good stuff happening, and there's a lot of you know just like this dog stuff and elevated safety has grown tremendously since I've since I started working for them. And they're going everywhere. Yeah, so yeah. we're doing stuff all over the country, teaching. I follow that Instagram page. They just everywhere, everywhere. Yeah, just just doing it. Yeah, and and was, again, all the guys that work there are amazing. Yeah, everybody's, everybody's great. Everybody's so skilled and knowledgeable, and it's just a lot of fun to to do and to work with those guys. Yeah, and y'all got sweet clothes. Oh, you gotta have the swag. Yeah, the them clothes is pretty dope. Like they got these live jackets and pants and all this other kind of oh, stuff. Oh yeah, I got a hat. Yeah, you you come to the class. Guys, yeah, yeah I gotta, you come to the class to get a hat. See if I get another one. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, is there anything that I didn't ask you that I should have asked you? Not, no. I mean, we hit we hit the biggest, the, you know, the big stuff. Um, it, when we when we were texting back and forth, you know, we wanted to hit on like the mental health stuff, mm-hmm. and I I think I kind of have a unique and both tragic uh, yeah. story, yeah. and um, you know, everybody's got issues. You know, you talk to anybody, mm-hmm. both in the fire service and outside of the fire service, there's stresses and there's bad shit happening everywhere. And, I mean, you look at the world we live in and all the craziness that's going on. Yeah. But you have to, you really have to, you know, look at what you have and be grateful for, for the things you have and, you know, and work hard for the, you know, work hard to get those things and be thankful for what you've, you know, what you've earned and what you've, what you've been given. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's super important and I, I'm, I'm a very social person and it's real hard. It was very hard with, uh, with COVID mm-hmm. to be, you know, cooped up to and, yourself and everything. Yeah. yeah. And it's, and like with, for me, mental health is engaging with friends, mm-hmm. having good relationships with friends, going to dinner, you know, talking about things beside, you know, it's real good hanging out with guys from work, but it's also good hanging out with those guys and not talking about work. Exactly. Yeah. And, you if, know. If all we can do is talk about work, we got a problem. It's got to right. be something, something we interested in. So. Right, right. Because there's so much, there's so much outside of the fire, fire house and fire service. And, and that's, again, what, what I think a lot of guys do um, to balance their work and home life is they, you know, do side work. Mm-hmm. And you talk to anybody whether they're in the trades or we got a couple guys here that do like landscape design and um, maintenance and plow uh, snow and you got guys that flip houses Um, you got guys that we got a couple guys that work in gyms and are you know CrossFit instructors and Mm -hmm. Um, have personal training businesses. Positive stuff. Yeah. Stuff and, better than sitting around talking. Right. <laughs> and that's my little hobby. <laughs> yeah, it's good, but it keeps, again, it, you know, it keeps, you, it keeps you busy and keeps you engaged and it keeps you, meet, I, meet, again, having communications with, with people, you know, you know, you, you don't really know. And um, just, I think that human interaction is, is getting, it's key. It is key. And it's, it's, it's something we need. It's um with uh the last year and everything going to like Zoom meetings and stuff. Yeah. It's, good, it's good to be. And it's good to, you know, right, be get to sit and talk to somebody in person. Like yeah. you said, we could do this over Zoom all day, but like, and it's uh, not the same. Yeah, that's why I say if it's worse come to worse, you if you take a long trip, my kids like they like dogs. Or like <laughs> they like the dog, they'll play with the dog. But yeah. Yeah. I, I'm just really appreciative of you doing this with me and doing this for me. So thank you very much. I'm going to let you go, let you get out of here. And cool, that's man. it. Yeah. All right. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Yeah, buddy. This has been a Fire and Iron Media production. If you have something to say, people want to listen. 